if you didn't test, would there really be a big issue? Big news uh, across the NFL and the NHL with uh, all of the COVID positive tests that have taken place over the last 48 to 72 hours. Now 80 plus players are on the COVID list across the NFL. The Browns are, are hit the, the worst today. I mean, the, the number of players on their COVID-19 reserve list is hard to eat. I don't know if it would fit in a tweet um, because of all the characters that are required to list the names. They have 17 players and two coaches, including Kevin Stefanski, uh, who has already Second missed time, time uh, due to COVID-19. He won't be on the sideline. They play Saturday this week against the Raiders. Here's, I got a big question on this. So the PA is complaining, and I think uh, on behalf of the Browns, it sounds like, but for everybody. Mm -hmm. It happened to the Rams, too. So the Rams went to Arizona for their game, clearly with some COVID. Yes. They're on the plane. With some COVID. <laughs> like spreading, with that. Yeah. spreading it, likely, on the mm -hmm. plane, which is a great place to spread COVID. You're, you're in close quarters together. Or Unlike any, on a football field. Any right? virus, on a yeah. football field, you're not spreading it. It's been proven uh, because we've seen it happen. We saw the Titans across the line of scrimmage yeah. with offensive linemen with Minnesota, and nobody on Minnesota got it. But on an airplane, you're probably getting it. Or somebody's passing it. Sure. All right. So the PA is saying we've asked for daily testing throughout this and you've resisted the protocols. Now, I'm not saying I'm pro daily testing. I think right. we're all on the same page of this. But given the protocols that they have, what they're saying is if we had had daily testing, you would have known these people had it, that they were going to Arizona with it. They wouldn't have necessarily gotten on a plane together to spread it to make it this much worse. Cleveland's thing, I, I don't know if they were home or away, but you put in situations where a bunch of people who have COVID don't find out they have COVID until the Monday weekly testing. And in the meantime, it gets spread around more and you end up in these situations where you have now a massive <laughs> list that screws with a game that you're not going to reschedule. Whereas if you had daily testing... Guys could have been peeled out when they had it daily, and it wouldn't add up to 17 or 19. So I'm not in favor of daily testing. I don't think it, we're all on the same page on this. Right. Like the protocols are, are dumb. But if you have these <laughs> protocols in place, I can kind of see what the PA is saying. If you have these protocols in place, then weed people out faster. Instead of waiting until Monday, we have 17 guys test positive. But the, the, the thing with the daily testing, that was removed from the table in the preseason because that was a, that was a carrot dangled to in front of the players vaccinated. so they would uh, get vaccinated and they didn't have to face the daily testing and the relaxed protocols would be in place for those guys. The, but I could see what the PA is saying now in hindsight. And the PA was pushing for well, it on the front side, envisioning something like this, which is bad for the Cleveland Browns, which is bad for the L.A. Rams. The Browns now face the first game this season where they're likely to not have a chance to win based on not having 16 or 17 guys, including no doubt. some very important players. Well, and Mark Maskey, by the way, speaking of protocols, has tweeted out from the Washington Post, the NFL considering a protocol tweak that would allow vaccinated, asymptomatic players who test positive for coronavirus to return to team activity sooner. Well, that's what we've wanted the whole that's time. A step, that's a step in the right direction. Um, the tide is turning on this thing uh, with media. Uh, Pro Football Talk, I was looking for the tweet, even tweeted, you know, it's time to let guys who are vaccinated and asymptomatic to play. I mean, who, who cares? Well, to, to what Paul just said, it, yeah. they're not spreading it if they're playing right. on the field. That, that we, we've seen that multiple times uh, throughout this I don't think there's been pandemic. a confirmed case during the entire pandemic of somebody well, contracting it on the field to play. You're so more I likely wonder, to contract it standing next to a teammate yeah. outside of a series than you are across I, the line of scrimmage. I wonder what the relaxed protocol would be if they adjust this because right now the, the, the NFL protocol is if you test positive and you're vaccinated, you, you can test negative. You have to test negative twice and the two hours. tests have to be 24 hours apart from each other. Two tests in 48 hours. So that, that you're automatically out like four days. days, right? Well, you, three days, because you have a negative test one day. Then you, then test you could the have next two day. negative tests the next two days. I think you'd be out at least three days. 
maybe four, which is which what no drew Tyler Higby. Yeah. This relaxation would at least let a Tyler Higby back. But in. no one, um, no one is out for the minimum allotted time in this, based on the protocol. Most of the time, these guys are missing ten days, which is the required for unvaccinated. If, if no matter if you test negative or not within those ten days, the majority of the time, the guys aren't testing out of this. They they simply serve their time and they're allowed back in the facility. Um, after ten days, yeah, you're not getting the two so, negatives, even if you're asymptomatic. Yeah, so I'm 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 thinking like, oh, how do you relax it? To me, it's just exactly what you're saying. If you're asymptomatic and you're you're showing zero symptoms, but you're positive, you can play. Here's the issue, though. I, I'm just being devil's advocate. The issue is lying now about being symptomatic or not being symptomatic. Well, and here's uh, this is just a common sense question I would ask um, to any to you guys, to the league, to whoever else. What if they just stop testing altogether? Would it would it cause a problem? Would the percentage of players that are now vaccinated, very small percentage that's that is unvaccinated, very small. The the staff in the facilities are all you know they're requiring booster shots for them now. They're all vaccinated. If you didn't test, would there really be a big issue? Well, Albert Breer tweeted out today, he uh, earlier this morning. To me, the answer is no. He said one idea being discussed in NFL circles at the December meeting, incentivizing players to get the booster shot with the promise that they'll stop testing players who got it. Like they'll just completely stop testing with the booster, which is funny that they're making up these rules as they go because it's telling it's telling us that they're just they just want the players on the field so they get the season in. It has nothing to do with the science behind this. Nothing. No. It doesn't anymore. So I don't know why they're testing now if they're if they're even having this discussion as the possibility to incentivize a booster shot for players. If you're not going to test them after the booster shot, what difference does it make now? 